Hello my soccer universe, in the 10th round of the Austrian Bundesliga, Lask is scheduled to play Altdach at home and as always I use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the other team from Vorarlberg although I should say it is in a way already the team because while I have called Lustenau the pioneers from Vorarlberg because they did many things first, Altdach have been the more successful team in the uh, overall when you look at it, there's I think the only fallback team to play in European competition so far, finishing him as high as third. So uh, they are in that sense quite successful, although in recent times it has been more a uh, battle against rele re relegation. The other thing that I find really uh, interesting is because when you think about Vorarlberg, when I grew up in the, in the night as Vorarlberg, which is the westernmost province of Austria, was kind of seen as, I don't want to say a football wasteland, but it was not known for its cl uh, fo football clubs. But now they have built quite some clubs there. And especially Alta have a really nice uh, stadium with uh, the uh, with the training grounds attached to it. That looks actually quite impressive what they could build in a very very short time. So, with that preamble. Let's look a little bit into this club. Alta were officially founded on 26th of December in 1929, but they were part of the gymnastics uh, club, like many uh, clubs at, in those time in Austria. They were the football section of, of the club that then ceased to exist, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the history. Actually, uh, they became really independent for the first time as its own club and in the current name, SC Sport Club Rheindorf. Altach, Rheindorf actually means Rhine Village, yes, they're in the Rhine Valley, I always find this name uh, kind of interesting. Uh, that was in 1949, but for the most time uh, of their existence, they have actually been very much a lower league team, so they're again one of the teams that had more recent successes, but it's a definite cutoff point in the late 80s, early 90s, where they became actually uh, a known quantity in Austria. The club's uh, traditional cars are black and white, although thanks to the sponsor with Cashpoint, unfortunately, uh, similar with Lusk getting rosa, uh, pink in there, um, there is yellow moving in, into the color scheme quite a bit, but this is an ad, at least, and you see the jersey up there, uh, they focus on a purely black look to kind of, you know, maybe a piece uh, a slightly disgruntled fan base at this moment. Um, there track record they twice won the second league in 2006 and 2014 and then had prolonged spells the last one uh, still lasting they won the third league also on three occasions in 91 97 and 2004 and uh, those are their biggest successes so far they also won the Vorarlberg cup uh, five times as their own uh, club but and also once as uh, as part of the amateur teams so find that very interesting they play their games in the cash point arena which now holds uh, almost 9,000 um, spectators, which is for Austria a really good and it's a nicely, uh, you know, purpose-built state. It's a state that looks quite nice, I have, to, I have to say. And this was all built based on their recent successes, especially going back to Europe. Now, regarding their fan base, to be honest, I cannot say much about that because I've I've never ever met an Alta fan. They are not one of the big hitters in Austria, especially going all the way to the west. And the west of Austria, uh, if coming from a Linz perspective, is relatively far away from me. However, having said that, I think they uh, really enjoy some really good support within the region of Vorarlberg they are from and have a rather heated rivalry with uh, Lustenau, the other Vorarlberg team. Uh, which is interesting in the sense that when Lustenau uh, got promoted in the late 90s, they kind of said, yeah, we are the team of Feuerlberg, and then Altach is following on their heels, which kind of makes a natural rather is now even more successful, to the point where one who could say if there was only one team from Feuerlberg, it's probably Altach at this point. Because Lustenau has only a very recent success. Altach is uh, way more of an established Bundesliga team than uh, Lustenau, for instance, ever was. Uh, they 
if you go online and uh, like um, uh, Google Alta fans, there are quite some nice choreographies that they did on the new stands, especially since this stands it's covered. Um, uh, the atmosphere there, yes, it is not like with the big teams, uh, like uh, Rapid or Sturm Graz or even Lask or whatever, but it has a, a decent atmosphere, um, uh, definitely one of the better grounds in Austria, especially from the, of the mid-sized ones. <music> Now, regarding the history of the club, as we have said, the club was founded as the football section of the gymnastics uh, uh, club, Turnerbund, uh, which loosely translates as gymnastics, but it's kind of a sports, sports club with a focus on uh, the German version of gymnastics, which is Turnen. Uh, but they played only from 29 to 37, then this uh, ceased to exist until after the war, then they refounded. Uh, the Turner Club, uh, that went bust rather quickly and from 449 on, they went by their own as Rand of Alltag. Uh, for the most time, they played only in the lower leagues within Vorlberg, uh, getting as high as in the old Vorlberg League, but they have stayed there until 86-87. Um, then they got promoted into the, what we call, Regionalliga, which is basically, uh, Austria has three Regionalligas there in the western portion, where they then played for, for a while and actually managed to get promoted in the early 90s for the first time to what was then the second league, but uh, very quickly got relegated again and then again going a little bit up and down until the late 90s when they made again a short stint into the sec second league, finishing uh, once mid-table, but then also getting relegated relatively quickly. It all changed then. They were staying then in the third tier, uh, always close to relegation when they got promoted in 2004. This is the point where Alta hits the next level. So they had the first uh, promoted pro promotion, I think in 80, 86, where they became from a purely very re original team into a more or less third tier team. 2004, they became a true professional team. Yeah, they got promoted in 2004, and I actually remember that. Yes, I was in America, but Lusk was also playing in the second tier at, at, at that moment. And within two years, they managed promotion to the first tier, uh, pipping Lusk for that spot in 2006. And then they had a uh, stay in the Bundesliga again. This was a Bundesliga with only 10 teams where they kind of were hanging around towards the lower end, getting uh, relegated again. But this time they did not fall back. Uh, they stayed in contention and probably should have get promoted much sooner than the actually were. They were always finishing, I think once third and always second, 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 second. 2014, they finished in uh, first place, got promoted and had an amazing season with the highest finish ever for the fallback team, finishing third. Meaning that they would qualify for Europe, and this is where they made their name in the 15 16 uh, Europa League season in the qualification round. They uh, had quite the run and quite some prominent um, <laughs> hit list. They eliminated Vittorio Guimaraes from Portugal 6 2 on aggregate with a 4 1 away win in the uh, second match. Uh, and then in the playoffs, they had to get, uh, play another port Portuguese team, losing 1 0 at, at home to uh, Belenenge and then only a 0 0 pushing forward. So that was a first run that gave them a little bit of a taste of what, what, what it could be because of the run that they got a little bit uh, more uh, down in, in the league. But they uh, followed up, I think, with a fourth place finish then a season later, which again meant they could qualify for Europe. And this time they had a, a full run from the first qualification run to the Europa League all the way to the playoffs, where they were barely eliminated. Uh, they eliminated a team from Georgia, then Dinamo Brest from Belarus. But then the really impressive one is uh, Ghent uh, with a 3-1 home win home, they had to play in Innsbruck. I th now I think this they could still play in Altag, but then they had to play the playoff in Innsbruck, where they lose to Maccabi Tel Aviv at home 1-0. However, they held a 2-1 lead away from home, which would have seen them through, uh, but then they concede a goal and are not making the group stage, which would have been absolute madness there. So those were kind of the glory years, so from 2014 to roughly 2018. Uh, as of late, then it became a little bit more, you know, uh, upper 
mid table, lower mid 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 table, and then uh, close to relegation uh, two year, years ago. If there was a just system in Austria, Alta probably should have get rele relegated because they uh, had the worst record. But you know, with having the points, blah blah blah, it worked out for them in the end, and the final finish doesn't look that bad. However, at the moment, it looks a little bit on the up. So currently, uh, I think the club is infrastructure-wise very well situated. However, they had a few really rough uh, seasons, as I said, with relegation battles in there. Uh, especially the last season was a little bit of a letdown because after escaping relegation, they actually wanted to uh, play a nicer style. Hired none other than Miroslav Klose. Got even a few interesting players in from Milan, for instance. Uh, but again, it was only a fight against relegation. However, this season, it seems like the club has solidified themselves. Uh, at this point, I would not necessarily say that Altach is an um, option for relegation. There are other teams in there that I fear uh, more for, if you would want to say it this way. Um, I think Altach is a solid mid-table team that, with some luck, might push for the top six. Although, I think... Probably 7th or 8th is more where they currently stand. Have a, a nice squad, have a, a very nice uh, coaching team as well uh, with some former Bundesliga players that, are, you know, the team works. is also kind of a little bit connected to the area. So that all looks good. And I, 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 I think if they can get the sporting side uh, to, to get a thanks to the... Um, uh, financial support from Cashpoint and, and so on. I think they're financially well enough that they could even uh, survive a potential re re relegation getting promoted again, although that league is really hard with only one promotion spot. But I think the club is very well uh, situated and I think given that they have such a nice stadium as well, they're actually enriching the, bond uh, the Bundesliga. And they, I, I would find it hard to see to say that I really want them to get re re relegated because I think that's a really uh, nice club, well working, like most of them. Now, as it comes for the rivalry with Lusk, uh, again, due to the distance, there's not much rivalry, and most of of the time when you talked Altach to me, it was always oh such a long away trip. That's not good. Uh, but other than that, there is not much as actually, if you would like, a little bit of a kinship between the fan bases because Lask is fighting the pink, Altach is fighting the yellow. And I see the irony that I'm wearing a Lask jersey with yellow sleeves here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, Altach, especially since Lask is back in the Bundesliga, have been actually a really uh, relatively easy win. Uh, the overall record in the Bundesliga is quite good. Read 16 wins, 6 draws and two only 2 losses. And the 2 losses uh, did not come uh, too long ago. This was kind of, kind of a funk season for uh, Lask. Uh, in the second league, it actually speaks a little bit more volumes because at home, Three wins, two draws, one uh, loss at home. And then away from home, it's only one win and five losses. I think that speaks all the volume that it needs to speak, that this was always a really, really hard away trip. Overall, 22 wins, eight draws, eight losses. As you can see, it is an opponent that Lusk is expected to beat. So ahead of the match, while Altach should be a must win. Uh, this season, Altach have been a really tough opponent, a really tough out. It also is another game that comes on the heels of a European night and this time away from home in France, which I think may play something in the last. Also have a few injured players, which actually might uh, play in the hands of Altach, who had the entire week to prepare for Lusk. Uh, where, yeah, after it looked good at the moment, at the, uh, this time around with in in injuries and the additional games, uh, it looks a little bit more, um, you know, tentative as well. On the other side, if you want to finish top six, you got to beat Altach at home. So that's what I'm saying. I'm hope hoping, with him. of course, I will be at the game again and I will be wearing for the first time this jersey. May it bring some luck. So... This ends my little foray into Altach. I would like to know how much you knew about that team, if I can enlighten you. Uh, if you uh, any comments are welcome below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon.
I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!